<clears throat> so um, this is a titration. So you're going to have to uh, dig out your skill set for operating a burette. Remember a burette? Okay. So um, the the um, the value that we're we're aiming for here is that equation we had set up before, where you had uh, uh, silver chloride. Yeah, that's right. Um, and ammonia yields the silver, that complex ion, there. So this is what we're getting at. The, the formation constant, I didn't use that expression before, but the formation constant is, uh, let's see, I think I've got it part of the discussion down here. You know, no, the formation, that's not the formation constant. I stand corrected. The formation constant uses only the ion. And the two ammonias to yield this product. Plus. Now, this reaction is important for the calculation, but this is the one we're getting at. We want the formation constant for this thing. Uh, KF. So it's going to be complex ion here. And then we've got silver in the denominator and ammonia in the denominator squared. That's what we're after, this K. But notice, if you're doing a titration, you need to be able to tell find some kind of endpoint right to to determine the concentrations here at equilibrium well the problem is that these are all in solution and we don't have anything that will easily not that it doesn't exist but it won't easily tell us when we've reached equivalent concentrations so what we we're doing is a an a precipitation uh titration so the formation of a precipitate tells us the endpoint. That's where this one comes in. <clears throat> because we're going to mix up um, a solution of silver nitrate and ammonia and form this complex ion. That's the first thing you do. And then we're going to add chloride as potassium chloride solution of a known concentration dropwise until we reach the point where this appears and stays. Okay. What you'll notice is as you add this to the solution, where the drop hits it, it'll form the white precipitate of this. And then as it mixes, it'll go away. Kind of like when we were doing acid based titration and you had the pink color show up and then it disappeared. And then we were looking for it when it turned pink and stayed pink. Just that very last drop did that. Now we want the very last drop that forms this and stays. Well, silver chloride is difficult to distinguish because it's, it's forms a very, it's white precipitate, but it's very tenuous. In other words, it, it doesn't, it's not easily visible in a bright room. So we dim the lights a little bit, and then we take a take a light and shine it through the side of our, our beaker. And remember the test for colloids is the Tyndall effect. Right? If that light goes through and you don't see it, you're looking at it from there, 
and you don't see the light bouncing off stuff in here, it's, it just goes through and comes out the other side if it's a solution. But if you got a precipitate in there, then you can see it better with the tendal effect. So that way we get closer to the endpoint using this method. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so how do we get at it? Well, let's see. If we go back to the um, uh, the compounds, we've got silver nitrate here. Silver nitrate, it's completely soluble. And we got, we're going to use one molar ammonia, not 10 molar, but one molar. I've tried to use one, two, five, and 10. One molar works best. Um, and then 0.1 molar potassium chloride. So that's a known concentration. If we have the known volume, then we know exactly how much chloride was added to reach the endpoint. And then we have uh, uh, volumetric flasks. Remember volumetric flasks? They have a long, thin neck. And then they have kind of a, at the bottom, there's a mark here. And in our case, that represents 100 milliliters of volume. Okay, so that's, you mix up your, your initial concoction uh, with silver nitrate and ammonia in this, bring it to volume, and that's, then you pour that into your Erlenmeyer flask. And that's your reaction vessel with your magnetic stir bar in the bottom spinning around. We did use that before, didn't we? Yeah, okay. So now you're, you're going to add, there's your valve, stopcock, and there's your burette, and you're going to add potassium chloride to it until you get that tindal effect. Light beam, and you can see it on this side, and if you can see it on this side, you can see the light beam on this side, then um, you know that you've reached the end point of your titration. Okay. Now, what we need is a reaction that will, um, and that's this one. This is the reaction that we're going to do. This is the reaction we're trying to get at. So if we have a KF that's like that, then we can use, We can use, let's see, I think the, the procedure describes it better. There we go. Um, KF. Yeah. Okay, so this, let me erase this. This is what we're after, right? There's our KF, but there's no chloride in there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, since this is, this is how we get the chloride in there, we're, we're, we're dealing with, this is the titration thing. This is what we're, we're after for the titration. We have silver ions and we have chloride ions that are available, right? Because this is an equilibrium. So there's some of these over there. Um, and these are aqueous. So the solubility product for this one is going to be um, here. And there, okay. Now, this, we want to get that chloride into this expression because that's the concentration we know. So we solve for um, silver. Okay, and that's the KSP divided by the chloride. So we're going to take this and substitute it right there. So now we have complex ion in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm gonna put the ammonia on this side. 
here. And then substitute for silver, we have KSP divided by chloride. Okay. And I think the, the method, uh, remember the denominator in the denominator is a numerator. So this flips. So now we can put, we'll keep KSP down here and chloride up here. Okay, so that's the expression that's going to give us K. We need to know what these values are at equilibrium. That's the trick. Okay, so there's the KSP. Uh, that says 1.7 times 10 to the minus 10. I think the slide said 1.8. Uh, it, it varies. Um, you can use either one. If you want to stick with the method, use 1.7 times 10 to the minus 10. Um, the method, I'm, we're making up two different solutions here. Um, one with, uh, both of them with one molar ammonia right here. But the second one is a higher concentration. We usually get the best results out of the first one. But we'll go ahead and make up both of them in case we have time and we can do two titrations. Um, uh, there's a description of the Tyndall effect. Right? That tells you when you've reached the end point. Data treatment. Okay. Um, the problem with this expression is it's difficult to create an ice table from this one. So what we have to do is, um, is go back in and say, because uh, silver ions are not here anymore, but they were originally uh, in the concoction, the first where we made it up. So we're going to substitute for KSP. And let me, uh, let me do this. If we substitute for KSP, what it's equal to now, we get silver ions and chloride ions. So now we're going to reconstruct an ice table based upon this. Okay, so the ice table is going to look like, uh, let's see, this is uh, products, this is reactants. So the reactants are going to be ammonia for our ice table, silver ions, chloride ions, and then on the, yeah, on the product side, we have our complex ion. Actually, I don't need that. Man, maybe I do. Let me do it this way, because that implies it's, it's word. No, that's okay. That works. And then we have chloride over here. So it, it seems funny because we've got two chlorides. But here's the way it works. <clears throat> and I've got an example down here. Um, I will say this. The calculation is simpler if we if we build our ice table with absolute amounts, millimolar amounts, and then we calculate the concentration later. Okay, and we we can do it with concentrations, but it'd be kind of unwieldy. What are we starting off with? Well, for this example, we're starting off with 0.5 millimoles of silver. How do we get that? Well, let's go back up. In the table where we built it. Here we go. Five milliliters of silver nitrate times 100 milliliters. Let's see, five milliliters times 0.1 molar. That's five, uh, 0.5 millimolar. Like five times 0.1. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we do that with the rest of them also. We just calculate how much is there initially. So we've got 0 0.5 millimole 
here. And silver, we got uh, 5 million gold. And chloride, we start off with 0 0.1 millimole. Okay, and before the reaction, there's nothing here, nothing there. All right. Um, so what change occurs? Well, at the end point, we've used up all the chloride on this side, and now the chloride's on that side. Right. So we subtract. This much, the chloride is now reacted, and it's over on this side. So we add this much on this side. That's why we've got chloride on both sides, so that we can keep track of everything. Okay, now what happened to everything else? Well, um, no, I got them turned around. I'm sorry. I got them turned around. This is supposed to be silver, and that's ammonia. Yeah, now it makes sense. A million more. Okay, so we're going to use up all this silver. So now we have no silver on that side. And uh, when we do that, we have to use a, a 0.5. The ratio here is one to two, right? One, one to two. So we have to use up a, a millimole of ammonia, which leaves us with four millimoles of ammonia. Okay, so what do we produce on this side? Well, we added 0 0.5 millimoles, right? So that means at equilibrium, we have 0 0.5 millimoles of complex ion. Now we have equilibrium values. These equilibrium values need to be converted to concentrations so that we can plug them back into our, well, this would be uh, KSP, this right here. That's the expression we're gonna use. So we just used uh, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 10 here. The ammonia concentration will be calculated from this one. The, Complex ion will be calculated from this one, and the chloride ion will be calculated from this one. And then we can calculate Kf. So what we need now is to calculate concentrations from this. Well, in this case, you're given the, the values um, one milliliter of potassium chloride was added to reach equilibrium and produce the silver chloride that we could see, okay? So that means the total volume is 101 milliliters. So we should divide each one of them by 101 milliliters. Right, millimoles divided by milliliters is molarity. I have said that before, haven't I? Um, moles divided by liters is molarity. Millimoles divided by milliliters is molarity. Right. Let me prove it. Okay. Uh, millimoles divided by milliliters. What's milli? 10 to minus 3? 10 to minus 3? Cancel, cancel. Moles divided by liters. So it works. Okay, so once you get those values, and they're in the, they're calculated below. Right, you can see ammonia is 3.96 times 10 to the minus two. Complex ion is 4.95 times 10 to the minus three, and chloride is 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus four. And we're using 1.7 times 10 to the minus 10 for the KSP for silver chloride. Plug it into your equation, and you get a number that's not there. 
That's the appendix. Oh, there it is <laughs> down below. 1.84 times 10 to the seventh is the uh, formation constant for this. Okay, so what do you compare it to? Well, let's see. I don't know if we have the value here that you can compare it to. Um, I might have to dig that up for you. Let me see if it's in the discussion. Hmm. <laughs> no. Oh, I bet it's on one of those slides. Yeah, uh, we didn't calculate it, but we can. It would be 2.1 times 10 to the third and 8.2 to number three. And 8.2. I'm pulling this off of one of the slides that we looked at. Times 10 to the third. Remember, this is the first ammonia, this is the second ammonia. So if we multiply those together, then we should get the accepted uh, case, K, F. Where's my calculator? Two point one exponent three and eight point two exponent three for times. So let's do it again. I got to change the display. One point seven times ten to the seven. There. And what did this calculation give us? Down here, oops, I went by, there it is, 1.84 times 10 to the 7. Right. So it's a little high, but that's okay. As long as you've got the same order of magnitude of the 10, same power of 10, you're in the ballpark. All right, any questions? Um, this last page is just an appendix. You might be wondering, all right, is ammonia really in there? Because when you put ammonia in water, it reacts with water and makes ammonium hydroxide. Right, so how much ammonia do you really have? If you say it's uh, one molar ammonia, is it really? Right, so I, I did a, an equilibrium calculation here with ammonia reacting with water and producing ammonium because ammonium will not complex silver. Only ammonia will. So you need lots of ammonia there. All right, so, okay, so we, uh, I built a nice table right, with this concentration, and I calculated that the ammonium ion is only 10 to the minus third molar. The rest of it is ammonia, right? So I ratio the two, and I found that 99.6% of the ammonia is still ammonia and not ammonium. So we're good to go. I mean, that's within like 0.4%. If we wanted to be really uh, anal about this, we would use, we would take 99.6, 0.996 times one, and that would be the value we'd use in here. Okay. It's probably not, I, it's interesting. I mean, I could, we could do that calculation and see if it would make a difference in this scenario, see if it gets us any closer, right? But um, for our purposes, um, I've just demonstrated that most of it is ammonia. Notice there are no questions here. It's just do the experiment and write the report, okay? No question. Any questions from the uh, 
from the ether? So there aren't any pre-lab, post-lab questions? I'm looking at the document as well. There's not supposed to be any questions. There's procedure, uh, data treatment. You just need to, the objective for this one is to determine, experimentally determine the formation constant for uh, the complex ion and prove it right in your report. That's it. Okay? That's it. So you can't lose any points on questions this time because <laughs> there aren't any. <laughs> okay, well, that's what we're gonna do uh, next, next Monday. We'll review this material for a test and hike into the lab and do this experiment. Okay.